Welcome back everybody. So today we want to take a little time with you and talk about one of my most favorite medicinal plants and that's goldenrod. So goldenrod is a very easily identifiable plant here mostly because if you look at the spear shaped top of this goldenrod when you look out across the prairie field it just really stands out it's easy to find it. So this stuff here it can grow pretty tall all the way up to about six feet tall but when you look across the prairie field, it really just stands out to you, kind of like a burst of sunshine. So the goldenrod, like I said, is one of my most favorite medicinal plants. It just has so many benefits to it, and it's such an easy plant to, to harvest and not to identify. So if you look at it, it has like these dandelion kind of clusters, or sunflower kind of clusters, all across the top here. As we look down the stem, it has the spear shaped leaves and then at the end of these leaves a lot of times there's just a little bit of serrations on them and the bigger the leaves are the more mature leaves at the bottom you could see the spear and the serration on the leaves a little bit easier so as far as trying to find these plants they really grow all over the U.S. and we're located in the eastern uh, woodlands here in Kentucky. But you can find these all over the U.S. and to Canada. They grow over in Europe and China and they're a very, very beneficial plant. So when we look at the goldenrod, some reasons that we might want to take it is uh, got to watch out for bees here a little bit. So a few reasons you want to take the goldenrod is you could use this as a poultice so maybe you're out on a trucking trip and you get like a cut on your leg or cut yourself with a knife or something. You could strip these leaves off of the stalk and you could either do a, like a water or natural poultice or you could put it in your mouth and do like a saliva poultice. But basically you can extract all the juices out of here. You'd put it on your cut or your laceration. You want to pack it onto that cut and wrap it up. And so the goldenrod it has some extringent properties to it. So it's gonna tighten up the skin or tighten up like a, like when you eat a lemon and it makes your lips pucker up. That's what it's gonna to do to that cut. So if you have that cut on there, you're gonna make that poultice, you're gonna seal it on there and it's gonna tighten up the skin around it. It's gonna help close that wound up and keep it from bleeding. So another one is these guys are real big in antioxidants. So you can make a tea and again, you'll strip these green leaves off You'll put that into your hot water and you just make a tea with it. And surprisingly, the goldenrod is actually really, really good tasting as far as the tea goes. Put a spoonful of natural honey in there and it's actually quite delicious. But now you could also use the flowers in your tea, but a lot of people say that the leaves themselves are actually the most beneficial. So to go along with that, so you can make your tea but now the goldenrod's also good for any kind of wounds on the skin. So you got like cuts, lacerations, burns, boils, uh, rashes due to fungus, anything like that. But you can make a, either a warm or a cold water infusion there and you could take that water and you could wash your hands in it. You could flush and wash off a rash or something like that. Wash your face with it. Really your entire body you could wash with it but it also has anti-inflammatory properties to it. So let's say you have a, a sore inside your mouth. These are great for a mouthwash. So if you got a sore throat, maybe a small abscess or a sore inside your mouth, you could take that tea, rinse your mouth out, you know, three times a day, maybe a little more, but you could help clean and, and purify the, your skin in your mouth with that wash including like I said like different kind of fungi and stuff so if you have like athletes feet make a bath of this you could soak your feet in there or if you have some kind of uh you know maybe you've been on the trail for a long time and your feet just ain't looking real healthy or, or clean then you might have like a fungi kind of issue soak your feet in this this bath here of uh goldenrod and it's going to help clean that area out so it's got a ton of benefits here so another one uh, as far as drinking the tea goes, but you could also make that poultice like we talked about and you could actually use it on a hemorrhoid in a dire situation But it's gonna again have that astringent properties to help tighten up the skin and close everything up 
So one of the things that Goldenrod is most famous for is the urinary tract system. So if you have a, a UTI, a kidney infection, uh, kidney stones, things of this matter, the Goldenrod is really to be looked at as a whole body cleanser. So not only can you clean and wash the outside of your body, your mouth, but it also cleans and cleanses from the inside out. So if you make that tea, you wanna make a strong brew tea. Nice hot water, a healthy handful of your, your uh, goldenrod leaves here. Let it steep nice and strong. Put that scoop of honey in there. But it's gonna help clean out your kidneys and clean your overall urinary tract. So that's a, one of the most beneficial properties that I use it for. Is I, and I like the flavor of the goldenrod tea, but I really notice when I'm starting to feel sluggish or kind of not producing as much energy as I should be, if I drink this for a few days, several times a day, it really feels to like rejuvenate your body and get it set back to like ground zero or the way it's supposed to be functioning. So the goldenrod has a ton more of benefits you could use it for as well. But those are some of the highlight ones. But as far as picking it, the main thing you really want to focus on is the green leaves. But don't underestimate the flowers as well. A lot of times I like to separate the two out. So I got my, my picking bag or my haversack here. But I'll put the flowers on one side. And then I'll go ahead and put the green leaves on a different side. And these guys are super easy to pick. And I like to pick the younger growth. The older growth at the bottom, it's already starting to die off. So if we pick this, you can just pinch the top of it, pull down, it's really easy to harvest it. I'll break that stem off a little shorter, and then I got the flower here as well. So for long-term storage, obviously you can make like an alcohol tincture, right? So if you do an alcohol tincture, I think it's best to use just the green leaves. Now you could use the whole thing, you get, besides the stalk, strip your leaves off, take your flower, tear it up, Put it into your mason jar for your tincture but now the flowers after it goes through its tincture process of about six weeks or so of soaking it and go ahead and mix it periodically get the air bubbles moving in there but i'm not a big fan of the way the tincture tastes when you mix the flowers with it it kind of has a bad aftertaste to me and i don't care for it so what i rather do if i was going to make an alcohol tincture is just use the green leaves but my most favorite way to do is making that hot water tea there so to store this for a long term all we're going to do is just keep on picking here but we're going to strip these green leaves off and we're going to put them in a drying rack and we're going to dry them out until they're so crunchy when you grab a handful and you crumble them up they just turn to dust once you get that done you can put them into a mason jar put a dry pack in there and they're going to last until next year again you got to be careful watch out for these bees so the honey bees like them bumblebees like them the uh the wasps actually come and and they take from the plant as well so you gotta be watch out for those bees as you're picking here but now the time of year to find these is like late august and early fall and they're really one of the most easy plants to identify here in the fall because when you look across the prairie field it's one of the few plants that are actually flowering right now so as we're walking around picking our goldenrod here I've seen these white flowers growing on top of some cedar trees, but these white flowers here are honeysuckle, and they smell very, very aromatic, but you could actually pick these off and eat them, and they're full of uh, antioxidants as well, and you could also pick these and make a jelly out of them, and the jelly is very aromatic and has a very flowery, pleasant taste to it as well. But as i seen the flower, it kind of reminded me, a lot of times when people look at this goldenrod and they see all the flowers and the yellow to them, you could smell them. They actually smell really good. They kind of have a dandelion smell to them. But with all these flowers on here, you might automatically think like, oh man, that's going to really flare up my allergies here. And keep in mind, this looks similar to ragweed, but it is not ragweed. This is goldenrod. And with goldenrod, it actually has anti-allergen properties to it. So when you make that tea, especially if you use it, the flowering part of it versus just the leaves, but this is actually gonna help soothe and calm down and boost your anti-allergen properties within yourself. And actually it'll be the complete opposite of what you might think as far as the pollen and, and having the allergy issues in the flower. So keep that in mind, these are anti-allergen. As I'm picking this goldenrod here, 
take a moment and look across this field. It's just absolutely loaded. So when you guys are trying to find this golden rod, the best places to look is open fields that has had soil that has been disturbed. So like the edge of forest, the edge of trails, maybe some, uh, some hay fields or farming ground. But that disturbed soil is always gonna attract these kind of plants. And these guys too, they like a lot of sunshine. So you're not gonna find these inside the woods. You're gonna find these on the edges of the woods, in the trail, open fields, even on roadways. So this golden rod, when you make it, it has a very similar taste to like green tea. And remember that they're just full of those real good antibodies or antioxidants, but that's really gonna boost your immune system and keep you from getting sick. Another thing guys, so when you're out here picking, it's a great opportunity to look around nature, look at these other plants, look at the bees. But now we have this golden rod behind us, which is absolutely beautiful. But if we take a closer look, there's a praying mantis right behind us. Go ahead and take a minute and take a look at that guy. So that praying mantis was really, really awesome, but I didn't want to disturb them, so we went ahead and moved down a little bit. And no big deal because there's so much goldenrod out here. So like I was saying, for this goldenrod, it's a great time of year to start picking this stuff and drinking it for those antioxidants to really boost your immune system there. So there's all kinds of things you could do with this goldenrod. And as I'm picking it, if you guys haven't noticed here, a lot of times I'll grab the goldenrod, the plant, and I'll shake it a little bit. And I'll just make sure I get those bees off of there. Or maybe some spiders in there I don't want to be touching. But I'll give it a little shake and it'll kind of scare that stuff away. So we're going to stay out here in the prairie for a little bit. And we're going to keep on picking this. So I got a little bit of golden rod saved up from last year. But really this is the time of year you want to get out here and pick it. And that way you have enough for the whole year. So I wanted to also give a shout out to everybody. As far as subscribing and giving us a thumbs up. And participating in our our conversations and leaving comments so we really appreciate you guys and we like all the comments that you guys leave and keep in mind everyone's learning together so a lot of times when we talk about this stuff there's definitely things that we leave out and there's also things that we might not know about so anytime you guys come across something you hear something or you want to add to it definitely add some comments to it and let us know about your experiences and then maybe something that you do with it that we do a little differently but a big thanks to all you guys that help support the channel and subscribe, and we'll catch you next time.